We are all humans, and we are all the same. We have the same organs, characteristics, and physical structure. Most importantly, we all have the same brain structure, but we are not all equally intelligent. Some people are highly intelligent, creative, and possess remarkable talents, while others lag. So, what is the reason for this disparity? In the past, people used to associate intelligence with brain size. If someone was intelligent, they would assume that person had a large brain. Conversely, if someone was not so bright, they would attribute it to a smaller brain. The reasoning behind this belief was that the brain was thought to function like a computer. The more transistors a computer has, the faster and more efficient it is at performing calculations. Similarly, people thought that a larger brain meant more nerve cells, resulting in better memory, faster calculations, and higher perception. This was a simple understanding that people held for a long time. However, as medical science advanced, it was discovered that brain size and weight do vary among individuals, but this factor does not significantly impact intelligence. For instance, the average brain weight for adult males is 1370 grams, while for adult females it is approximately 1200 grams, a difference of 170 grams. But does this mean that women are less intelligent because they have smaller brains? Absolutely not. To suggest otherwise would be preposterous. The best example to refute this notion is the brilliant mind of Albert Einstein. Dr. Thomas Harvey was obsessed with Einstein's brain and believed that its weight and structure held the secret to his genius. So much so that, upon Einstein's death, Harvey stole his brain during the autopsy and conducted research and experiments on it. Surprisingly, Einstein's brain weighed approximately 1230 grams, which is below the average weight for adult males. Nonetheless, there is no questioning Einstein's intelligence and creativity. In 2018, Gideon Knave, a PhD holder in neural systems, and Dr. Quayle, a professor of neuroscience and genetics, conducted a study on over 13,000 individuals to investigate the relationship between brain weight and intelligence. The participants in the study varied in gender, age, height, and socioeconomic status, making it a comprehensive sample. The results of the study suggested that brain size does have an impact on intelligence, but only to a very small degree. Individuals with larger brains tended to perform slightly better on cognitive tests, but the difference was only about 2%. Additionally, in other tests such as academic achievement assessments, brain weight had no significant influence. Furthermore, there were cases where individuals had the same brain weight but varied in intelligence levels, indicating that other factors must be at play in determining one's intelligence. So, if anyone tries to use brain size as an excuse for their academic performance, they should think again because it's not a valid argument. Other factors, yet to be fully understood, contribute to the variation in intelligence among humans. There are several theories that attempt to explain the variation in intelligence among individuals. One perspective suggests that intelligence is related to the connectivity between different areas of the brain. Proponents of this theory argue that the better the neural connections and communication between brain regions, the higher the intelligence of the individual. Another school of thought attributes intelligence solely to genetic factors, suggesting that it is inherited through genes. This theory highlights the role of genetics in determining one's intellectual capabilities. However, a third perspective emphasizes the influence of environmental factors. According to this theory, the environment in which a child grows up plays a crucial role in shaping their intelligence. This idea is supported by studies conducted on twin siblings, which revealed that identical twins raised in different environments exhibited differences in intelligence. Indeed, our understanding of intelligence is far from conclusive. Even the definition of intelligence is a subject of ongoing debate, and the commonly administered IQ tests only assess a limited scope of intelligence, primarily focusing on logical and linguistic abilities. However, experts agree that there are at least eight types of intelligence. Therefore, labeling individuals as intelligent or otherwise is problematic, especially since we may not even have a comprehensive understanding of what constitutes intelligence in the first place. The development of modern intelligence tests can be traced back to the French government's initiative to streamline the educational system 
and identify children with lower academic intelligence relative to their age. The government entrusted this task to Alfred Binet, a renowned psychologist. Instead of creating a fixed test, Binet devised a method to assess children's intelligence relative to their peers. Binet's approach involved observing what children of a specific age could typically do and understand, establishing a baseline. This baseline was referred to as the fixed biological age. Then, when testing a particular child, he would compare their performance to this baseline. The level at which most children of a certain age performed was considered the norm, and Binet termed this the mental age. Finally, he calculated the intelligence quotient, IQ, by dividing the mental age by the fixed biological age and multiplying by 100. This formula gave rise to the IQ score we know today. Indeed, the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale, developed by Alfred Binet, was further refined by American psychologist Lewis Terman. Terman conducted one of the most intriguing psychology experiments related to intelligence. He identified a large group of American children with exceptionally high IQ scores, above 135, which categorized them as geniuses. Terman decided to monitor these children as they grew up to observe their life trajectories. Surprisingly, most of the children did not significantly differ from their peers, and only a small fraction of the 1,500 children stood out as exceptionally accomplished. Moreover, among those who scored lower on the IQ test, there were individuals who went on to become highly successful and creative, challenging the very definition of intelligence. Notable examples include Nobel laureates Richard Feynman, Luis Alvarez, and Shockley, the inventor of the transistor. Interestingly, Shockley failed the IQ test twice, further complicating the notion of what it means to be intelligent. These individuals posed a conundrum to the world, as their achievements contradicted the conventional understanding of intelligence as measured by IQ tests. Absolutely, intelligence is multifaceted and goes beyond academic performance or test scores. Traditional intelligence tests often focus on specific areas, such as logical and linguistic skills, but they fail to capture the full range of human intelligence. There are multiple types of intelligence, including logical mathematical, linguistic, visual spatial, emotional intelligence, and more. Just because someone may not excel in one area does not mean they are not intelligent in other domains. It's important to understand that there is no such thing as absolute intelligence or absolute stupidity. Each person has unique strengths and weaknesses, and their intelligence may shine in one area while being less prominent in another. So, if you score low on an IQ test, don't be discouraged. Remember that these tests only measure a narrow aspect of intelligence, and they do not define your overall worth or potential for success in life.